Hello, Parim. Hello, Dormi. Hello, Zerom. Hey. So, uh, this is the first episode we're doing in English. So, yeah. uh, we have with us uh, Zerom. Um, so, before we start, would you like Zerom to share a few things about you? Uh, you've been to Greece for, in Greece for 10 years now, so uh, some backstory so we can uh, you know, grab it from there and start going. Sure. Um, backstory, so I'm 36 years old, um, born and raised close to Paris. I'm an IT engineer, did a, an IT school uh, in Paris, and as soon as I got my, life, my um, diploma, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I traveled to London just for um, a few weeks that started with just a small mission and then the guys there were like you should stay I was like okay I'm 25 yeah let's stay <laughs> <laughs> so I stayed a bit and then after three four years you know stuff start to be very complicated you start to lose a bit track of your of your own life and you, you go deep into work if work is banking and um, so that was too much for me to, to answer. I was not sure at that time in my life what I wanted and I definitely didn't want to work for seven days a week. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was like, okay, let's do something else. Let's, uh, I don't know, buy a restaurant on a beach somewhere. Okay. And um, <laughs> boom, to <tonight. laughs> So I had a bit of money set aside. And um, so I started looking at what I can do with this amount of money. And um, businessforsale.com and I found a restaurant in Naxos. Never heard of it before. Okay. So I took a plane, went there, and it's like, the beach is nice. It's a beautiful island, it's quite big, so guess is that there's a lot of stuff to do there all year round. It's not really true, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was the guess, right? It, it should be better than like smaller <laughs> islands in Greece, so. Yeah, that, that was my point. I wanted to avoid getting trapped somewhere, mm-hmm. all right? Mm-hmm. I like the proximity with Mykonos and Sartorini because if anything happens, you, know, you can go to where there's a lot of people, mm-hmm. which is not true in the winter, but I didn't know it at that time. Um, and then um, it's close enough to Athens. Mm. On paper, it took me 45 minutes to come today. In reality, it took me twice that. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> shit happens. Right? Yeah, indeed. Um, but in, in general terms, um, that's what I wanted. I wanted something like quite central, mm-hmm. where I'm not closed down in a, like in a golden jay, let's say. Mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah, Naxos filled, uh, filled all the, the checks. I uh, checked the business, I was like, okay, well, I have no idea what I'm doing anyway, but uh, I see a few issues I can fix. Mm-hmm. If I fix this and I do as the previous owner were doing before me, chances are I'll be all right. Okay. Ah. So, buddy. Nice. So, so uh, you usually have heard stories of people, you know, going to an island or somewhere, liking the place and then finding something to buy about you. You started completely opposite, so you said, I, I, I want <laughs> in a, a restaurant on a beach. Well, I wanted, I want, you know, <laughs> something in my mind, I wanted um, something more quiet, something more easy than banking, right? Mm-hmm. And, especially in London, right? Especially in London. London is a crazy place. I love, I love the city. It's, it's amazing. If I have to move mm-hmm. out of Greece at some point for any reason, uh, London would be one of the, of the top choices I could, I could take. Um, that being said, that's not what I wanted at that time. Um, so yeah, so so I went to I went to Naxos and um, because yeah, I was looking for something more quiet. And mm-hmm. uh, here, first mistake: you don't buy a restaurant if you want a quiet life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. right. It, did, it did, makes sense when I say yeah, it. Did, but, did, did you know. it ruin your first summers? Um, summer, what summer? Ah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, the restaurant is literally on the beach, but uh, okay, I was not seeing the beach okay. <laughs> because you were because you're managing you were 10 people, you have 120 seats okay. uh, in the restaurant, so that's you know a lot of running to do, buying okay. stuff, you know, stuff that you've never done in your life before, you don't know how it works, right? So, you learn the hard way, okay, how it should be run. <laughs> So, so you have no experience running restaurants or uh, any kind of uh, serving business, let's say? No, yeah, no, 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 no idea what I was doing. Um, that being said, um, that was not my first business. Mm-hmm. Um, that was my third. Okay. okay. So I had an idea about how to manage stuff and people, which is mm-hmm. good. Um, but in a restaurant context, hmm. So I'm, I'm crazy, but I'm not stupid. So what I did is I'll say to the previous owner, uh, you know what, you will, you will work with us. 
Mm -hmm. You want me to sign a deal, work with us for a, for a season, so I'm sure I make my own mistake, I will not do again the mistakes that you did. Okay. Mm. So that would make sense, right? Yeah. So okay. I think that saved us um, a lot of money. <laughs> and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. a few mistakes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, what's the hardest thing about restaurants? Well, sorry? What's the hardest thing about restaurants? The hardest thing? Um, I, I mean, the, the, the biggest challenge, I mean, you had face. There's so many. I don't know. I don't know where to start. If you had to pick one, I mean, if I had to pick one, um, yeah, maybe. I'm, I'm not sure it's restaurant related, but maybe we have to do with managing people mm -hmm. in an hospitality, hospitality business. I think it's very different from uh, other type of businesses, and it might be more local or cultural mm -hmm. than something that has to do with restaurants. But um, it's really hard to find people um, who are willing to work with you for the whole season. Okay. Mm. And, um, and it's even worse if uh, that business is open all year round. So that was not the case for the restaurant, that was the case for the business after that one, which okay. was still hospitality. Well, it was, um, it was a bar that is really on the, on the port of Naxos, mm -hmm. a very small, like as big as the table, roughly, for the entrance. Okay. So very, very okay. small, right? Um, that was a nice contrast with the first business, 120 seats to, you know, 10 table. Okay. So that was cool. But that was open all year long. And here you find the same challenge as before. How do you hire? And how do you keep your people? And when you're open all year long, you've got another problem, which is um, most of the people will want to work for a certain amount of time in that year. And then they will want to get money from the state for the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm. So either they would want to work um, black, yeah, which I'm on the port, I can't, right? <laughs> I'm like the first business you'll see when you come to Nexus. Yes. So that's not possible. Um, so you have to find another solution and it's really hard to find people willing to, you know, to work for okay. normal times. I, yeah, it's, uh, it's really difficult because most people are, um, I know from friends who have similar businesses or uh, working in the area and it's really difficult because most of people want to have like um, extreme like season working so they they work for tips or you know for all the extras that they get from that time and then the rest of the year they they don't do it and I, I never thought that this would pro po uh, propose a big problem in businesses wanting to run all be wrong. That's one of the biggest challenges in my opinion and I see uh, like for the next season mm -hmm. I see all businesses in Naxos they're like trying to hire as much as possible. Mm -hmm. so they're trying to hire as many people as possible and it's really hard because so on one on one hand we want to maximize the revenue by square meter that we have in the small island. On the other hand at some point we'll have to think about where those people will sleep mm -hmm. well where they will live. And for businesses open all year round, the problem exists as well in the winter, in a yeah. smaller dimension because you know it's not as busy yet as summer. But we see that you know winter is getting busier and busier. Covid helped definitely. Okay. So um, Covid helped. That's a weird saying to say. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Especially for fast fashion yeah. business because yeah. it was the sector that was uh, mostly damaged. But uh, mm -hmm. maybe you mean for from people working remotely and moving to Naxos, so... Yeah, I think it helped for, for the island to not be seen at, uh, for, for a destination that works only in summer, mm -hmm. but something that can work all year round. Okay. And, um, and that's really nice, because if you, can, if you can move a bit away, you know, take, take a step aside and look at what we've built so far. We've got an island that's crazy busy in summer, where even local people are saying this is awful how people can come here on holidays right mm -hmm. it's awful yeah i mean we have so low streets and so many cars and you know people don't park they just stop <laughs> right that's common for many islands in greece it's not I think uh, that's local a cultural Naxos. thing i don't know you're in a better spot to me uh, for me that to say so but uh, i don't know yeah i think it's cultural but you know they don't park there they just stop there do their business and then leave again and then um, well that's the problem you know the, Tiny roads, lots of cars, more, by the time pass, more SUVs mm -hmm. on the island. So there's a lot of issues that we need to fix. And, um, well, to give you a very concrete example, uh, close to home, uh, we've got uh, a parking. I thought it was uh, from the municipality. 
and uh, I'll just learn that it's not. So this parking is turning from a free parking to hopefully a parking again that, mm -hmm. uh, that you would have to pay for, so it's completely fine. But I'm guessing the next step would be to turn it into a hotel or something like this, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So because that's, you know, that's the investor's point of view. You have, I don't know, 100 square meters. What's the equation where I can get the best return of Bond. investment on that 100 square meters? So parking is a start. The next step would be something to build on it. So okay. Can rent. So, so, so is this um, a common thing? I mean, you, you find a place, you make a, a parking spot, you charge for this, and then, then you build something else on top of that? Um, parking is a, is a new tendency. Um, so it's it's really new, but it's it's very common to see um, Horafi. Yeah. yeah, something that free land. How are you going to yeah. build something there? And people build there, and mm -hmm. then it ends up on Airbnb or something. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, how, what proportion of people that um, are being employed in restaurants are locals, and how many of them are? Lots of locals. Um, that's yeah, lots of locals. That's for sure. I'm not. I'm not sure about the proportion because I, yeah. I left uh, out of the market. So I'm, I'm not hundred percent sure. Um, but um, but that's that's a problem for the development of the island as well. Mm -hmm. mm. Because if you cannot attract um, workforce from other places, and if you don't spend the money in the winter to train new people. Mm -hmm. mm. You can higher. You can take your prices higher, but the service stays the same, and it stays quite low in in some places. And so the gap is is growing, which is not really the case in other islands. If you take Mykonos and Santorini, for example, it's not that like that. Yeah. People are trained, and when you go there, you it's completely different. Good, I've seen that different. Yeah, but you expect a good kind of service. On Naxos now, you find places that are. As expensive as in Mykonos or in Santorini. Mm. But not as building. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, that's strange. And I, I really want to, to talk more about this, but uh, I want to see, you know. So the first question would be, how do you come to Greece? But uh, let's let's leave this a uh, bit behind, and and we'll come back uh, to it later. So you start with the restaurant, you move to to a bar. Um, What's the next years? Because I know you've done uh, more things uh, apart from just uh, yeah. the businesses. Right. So, um, so I met my, my wife um, during uh, this transition. Um, so that was another um, reason to stay, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we, we opened this, uh, this bar together and uh, it was great. That was a lot of work again. And uh, so we grew, we grew the business uh, as much as we could and then we ended up selling it. Um, one of my dreams coming to Naxos was uh, to have a boat. Okay. I do sail boats. I, I love boats. I was living on a boat in Paris before going to London. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. um, nothing in the family. I mean, it's just my own my own thing. And um, so I bought a boat uh, in 2012 when I arrived uh, a year after when I arrived on the island. I think. Um, just for me, as you know, in the beginning. For just, uh, creation. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And then turns out it's much more expensive than what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, maintenance is uh, quite expensive. It is, it is. So I had to find a way, you know, to either sell the boat and then, uh, you know, I'm a pirate without a ship. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how I can feel that, you know. Or I found a way to make it work. Mm -hmm. um, so we both decided, uh, my wife and I, to start working with the boat. Um, so that's how we ended up uh, doing sailing tours uh, in Naxos, um, and that was great. We grew that business as well. Um, we ended up um, like I think we, we pushed the business as much as we could, and um, and it got like it got famous. It got um, you know good return on investment, and it, okay. it's very optimized and everything. It's very nice. Um, we sold it okay. right now. <laughs> so now, um, well, oh. Since yesterday, I'm officially uh, a pirate without a ship. Yeah. <laughs> so what's uh, you can still buy a ship though. I mean, yeah. 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 Well. Yeah. Yeah. But now I know that it's it's more expensive than you know just buying <laughs> it. <laughs> so I'll wait a bit. Uh, so the business was uh, only with uh, your own boat, or did you also uh, hire other boats and just our it? own boat? And uh, and that was one of the strengths of the business actually. Mm -hmm. um, we decided instead of. Um, taking more boats and you know losing in quality okay we decided to focus on quality 
reduce the number of people that we can take on the boat. So the license was for 12 people, I think, and we end up taking only eight. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So this means that the ticket has to be a bit more expensive, right? Okay. And uh, so that's what we were doing. And because we had a, a very strong website and a very good online um, presence, uh, people were actually booking us like months in advance. Um, because it was easy. Because it was easy, because it was the first uh, sailing tour in access that you could find on the internet, because reviews were amazing, because you know what you're booking. You're booking you know, a cruise with a couple, and they love what they do, and you know, they know what they do, and you know what's included, and you know, everything is clear, and uh, well, it makes a difference, yeah. Okay, and um, you, you talked about reviews. Where would you get your reviews? I mean, is it Google? TripAdvisor. TripAdvisor is great. TripAdvisor, mm-hmm. it's okay. great. Well, for reviews, it's yeah. uh, it's a it's a good try. <laughs> do, do you have a hard time that people can write comments and reviews without trying your service? Oh yeah, yeah, we had a few of those. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah, we had a few of those, and and that's true as well for um, the other business uh, for the pastry uh, on the port. Mm-hmm. We had a few reviews uh, from people saying that they tasted um, the pastry something that we never had on the menu, and really? uh, <laughs> and that they they could not sleep because they were sick. Okay, wow. So, you know, people doing that are not really smart, so you understand that it's, you know, local, maybe a bit of jealousy, maybe, you know, these kind of things. So you end up understanding who's doing it. Mm-hmm. And, um, well, long story short, I'm an IT engineer. Yeah, <laughs> I'm an IT engineer. Okay. Ah, okay, yeah, so yeah, of course. I had a few ways to reply to those. Um, Comments. Acts. Yeah. <laughs> I can't say much, but yeah. Um, okay. Oh yeah. L- yeah. Let's leave it there. But mm. um, I- I'll have to add that um, uh, my girlfriend actually has a, a similar, not a similar shop, but a shop, and um, mm-hmm. they've got many reviews. And oftentimes you see like a bad review, and if you go to that person's profile, you just see a five-star review on the competitor and nothing more. And yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Sometimes it could be, uh, you know, obvious that it's not that, but Anyway, I mean, you cannot. Uh, mm. It's good to have reviews, and it's good to have people saying their opinion. So, uh, you cannot do anything other than accept the the small percentage of bad actors. On yeah, I mean, I, I like uh, I like bad reviews if it's constructive. Mm-hmm. I, I remember a review that hurt very much, but it, it was true. I mean, the the people came on a day where it was crazy. We were really busy, and we didn't serve them well. Mm-hmm. So they say so. And, um, and that's, that's okay, you know, because it really happened and, um, you know, it, it helps you get better. That's, that's the goal, right? Um, reviewing your competitor to, you know, somehow get it down, it's, it's not clear business, not plain business, it's, it's not ethical. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't like that, so I replied in my own, my own ways. Mm. <laughs> so... Um I would like to ask one thing about Naxos is what I asked you before. Um, how how does it feel being on the island during the winter, and has that changed since when you came and now? Yeah, it's it's changing for sure. Um, it's it's really nice because most of the time this year doesn't count, all right. <laughs> most of the time we've got beautiful weather. So it's really nice, you can go to the beach, maybe you want to swim, even though people start swimming in January. But um, I don't, I'm not here for, for the cold. I mean, I need, uh, I need hot water, <laughs> otherwise I just can't do it. So, um, so yeah, it's really nice because you have time to go to the villages, you go to the mountains, you, know, you enjoy the, the island, the hurt of it, you know, mm-hmm. the, really, the essence of it. And that's really nice and it contrasts a lot with what you do in the summer because you're running and you work in tourism mostly. So, um, so that's really cool. Um, this is changing because more people are coming to Naxos uh, for the winter as well. Um, we might have, um, a, how should I say, we might be a bit responsible uh, for that. I say we as uh, in the work from Naxos.gr project. Um, so on, this, on the Slack channels we've got uh, 80 people roughly. And uh, people are coming to, to the island. They sometimes they just stay, you know, weeks, a couple of months. Sometimes they stay the whole, the whole winter. And we even have people who came for one month, extending the stay to six months, and are now looking to buy a house. Okay. Right. 
So, you know, it's really nice and it brings life for, for the winter and it's really nice mm -hmm. and it brings also a uh, kind of people that we don't have. Okay. So that's cool. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this gives a great pass to uh, hear a bit about uh, work from Naxos, uh, what was the idea, what, uh, what you're offering or uh, what's that? Right. Um, well, I'll be honest with you, Walk from Naxos comes from the fact that we got jobs from uh, walkfromcrete.gr. Mm -hmm. Okay. We saw the website and we were like, they're not selling anything that we cannot sell from here. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we said, okay, let's do a website, um, send a few press release and, um, and see how it goes. Right? So, um, so we did the website in two days, um, something fast, quick, you know, it's still online. Um, I wrote a PR and uh, I'll send it to a few contacts and, um, and boom, you know, it ended up on Cathy Merini, Norama, everybody somehow heard of it or was talking about it. And uh, so that was, that was really nice and it, it actually worked, it bring people to the island mm -hmm. or at least it put the island on the list to people who were looking to come to Greece for work, you know, in a remote environment. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and last summer, for example, we had a lot of people coming, you know, renting Airbnbs and just working from there because we're not ready with a co-working space yet. Mm -hmm. I can tell you more about that. Um, so yeah, so that's how it started. We got jobs from what you create, from what okay. you create. We did a website. Long story short, a few months later, um, we got in touch with the team from what you create, from what from Crete who basically say to us, uh, how did you do that? Uh, we need help. You are much more advanced than us. Uh, please help. Oh, okay. wow. <laughs> That's fun. Uh, so I was like, okay, um, more advanced. What do you mean? Uh, we've got a website and well, that's all because we never find a way to get a co-working space. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that links to what I was saying before. People owning uh, land on Naxos are looking for high room. Makes sense. That's mm -hmm. their, um, their goal. I mean, it totally makes sense. I understand it. Um, a co working space is not a business that can make a lot of money if it makes money. Um, yeah. Not directly, at least. Maybe indirectly or. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's really hard. Um, so I've been contacting that project uh, with um, a company in France who's doing um, software for co working space. Okay. So I have an idea of how, how profitable this type of business is. And well, it's not. <laughs> it's really hard business, and I'm not 25 years old anymore, so I'm not taking the risk myself. All right. Okay. <laughs> this is over. So, um, so yeah. So we, we still have an idea for that project, and um, and we're still working on it. But um, because we cannot find a place to open the co-working space, the idea would be to get some kind of crowd funded to mm -hmm. to do this project. Okay. Okay. Okay, um, because I don't want it on my shoulder uh, only. Um, I'm looking at ways to to involve the whole community in it, and uh, I think it would make sense to organize it as a DAO. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So we, we started just uh, speaking about it uh, like this week. Um, it's in my mind for a few a few weeks now. Um, I think it completely makes sense to you know build a DAO for that project so everybody can you know vote for what it's going to be and uh, find a way to raise money uh, from that DAO thing. So uh, would you like to share a few things about what a DAO is because uh, you know it, it, it's very fashionable uh, these days, mm -hmm. but um, many yeah. people might not uh, know about it. Sure. So it's. Um, it's an organization, decentralized mm -hmm. uh, and autonomous. So that means that it's, uh, you can see it as a, as a group of people gathering with the same, hopefully, intentions. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, um, it's managed in a, in a way where everybody has its say to what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. right? So let's say we build a DAO as three together, which is not a good idea because three is not a good number. <laughs> it's a good way to not having things done. But um, let's say we need 51% uh, of votes uh, to do something and uh, I want to vote for buying a new chair. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I propose that vote to the DAO, to us, and everybody votes. So you want to buy it, you want to buy it, no you don't want, and I want. Two against one, it's mm -hmm. the majority, let's buy a chair. Okay. Okay? okay. Everything is on smart contract on a blockchain. 
So that means that um, I cannot um, move the system to my way. If mm -hmm. we say it in the beginning, it's 51%. Or if we don't have, have Yeah, if we don't have that 51%, it will never happen. Mm -hmm. There's okay. no way to force your work into it. There's no bribery, there's no these kind of things. So that's really, really interesting. And, um, and it, as you see, it brings really the people together because they have to speak together to get things done. And they really have a way to change what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's really interesting for a project like Work from Access. Okay. Uh, would it work to have a distributed co working space so we could use um, hospitals or Airbnb, uh, hotels? Sorry, not hospitals. <laughs> <laughs> this is <the> last time. <laughs> uh, hotels, Airbnbs, or other places that host people that uh, possibly have uh, less, more capacity during the winter. Some of them are closed, but the others that are staying open are not possibly like 100% full. Mm -hmm. So maybe try to find spaces or rooms or, you know, try yes. to organize that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we started this um, for the winter. Um, so we tried to get in touch with uh, hotels and Airbnbs who could stay open a little bit longer in the mm -hmm. winter to offer uh, the places at a discounted price so people could come and, and work from there. Um, we even had people who have a property in Naxos but are not interested in renting it mm -hmm. in normal uh, channels, but for such a project, they would consider it. Okay. So we have a few solutions, but it's, it's very tiny. Mm -hmm. mm. It's very time consuming as well, because you need to you know, speak with those people and, um, and there's, a, there's an issue of um, responsibility, mm -hmm. right? If I bring people to your house that you don't rent because for some reason, um, what and happens if yeah. something broke, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, so it's um, it's something that we're exploring as well, but it's it's not the main focus. What's what's the magnitude you're looking into? I mean, how many people would you like to host in a, in a calling space? Is it ten? Is it twenty? A hundred? It's it's more than it's more than twenty for sure. A uh, hundred is a bit is a bit too much, I think. Um, but basically, we're saying that. Um, the main problem is okay is the co-working space, but it's also where people can stay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was the next thing that I, that was I was about to ask. I mean, if you need a co-working space with forty seats, I mean, it's like uh, you need forty apartments for these yeah. people to stay there. Exactly. And I guess they're not available, especially during the summer. Yes, that's that's the point. In the summer, um, the cheapest thing now is 100, 200 euros a night. Like in in a chan yesterday, uh, somebody was complaining that it was the cheapest they found was two hundred euros a night mm -hmm. on Airbnb for August. Okay, so that's a problem because even if we have a working space at the moment, uh, we won't have anyone. And there are no homes available for ending. I mean, for full year ending. No, August, no it, well, <laughs> full year is really difficult. Okay, really because difficult. people want to rent their houses by Airbnb in the mm -hmm. summer. Yeah, yeah. Even local people have trouble yeah. finding a place, right? Yeah, I've, I've heard this first about um, in Sandorin when Airbnb um, started operating in Greece. Uh, a new teachers uh, mm -hmm. had a problem, uh, you know, finding a place in yeah. Sandorin. I guess we're talking about something similar there. Exactly. Yeah. And what do these people do during the, the winter? I mean, they <coughs> do they just have the houses? I mean, oh. stay idle? Yeah. Wow, mm -hmm. that's a shame. Yeah. And how much more money can they make? I mean, I, I mean. Uh, what's the season period? I mean, it's it's from April or May. It, it usually starts in April. April and mm -hmm. until uh, September or October. Yeah, October. Yeah. October. Mm -hmm. Okay, October. That's so not bad. Actually, it's, it's a good season. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a good, good season. season. High season will be much shorter, of course, but um, okay. It it's already started, kind of. Yeah. I see on on the the boat business I was talking about before. The first booking is in two weeks. Ah, never wow. happens so early ever. So yeah. that's nice. This year is different, I think, because uh, people are like uh, waiting and holding their horses until they can finally unleash their yeah. vacation. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're looking at the window between COVID on one hand, the war on the other hand, and they're like, okay, I'll go, <laughs> you know, just only days, two weeks, and then I come back and we'll see what happens. <laughs> so yeah, I guess that's what's happening. So that way, that's why it starts a bit, uh, a bit sooner than, than usual. Um, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, they, they have they have issues, and uh, so there's a question of money, but there's also a question of what people have in mind, right? Um, I was speaking with someone um, that we met who's from Athens and uh, came to the island, 
and uh, he said that um, he spoke to people where they had um, their properties empty during the winter and uh, he was like okay I want to rent it for a month or something two months and the other guy was like why what do you want to do why, why are you coming here what do you want to do right like very suspicious sir. this is strange <laughs> people are yeah, coming yeah. in the winter now <laughs> right? What's happening? What's yeah, happening? something, something, something's changing, and um, well, maybe at some point we have to take all those people together in a room and say, "Look, can be me, people. You can do something in the winter as well." Mm -hmm. Maybe okay. it's as simple as that. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm pretty sure that if they could have uh, like um, a steady revenue, even though it was not as big as in summer, and uh, I understand that. It's, going to, it's not going to be, but if they, they find a solution and if, if they can do it in the autopilot without, you know, running the business, maybe that... Uh, yeah. Also, I guess they should prefer having have families too. I mean, just, you know, every uh, random student that comes there and ruins the whole thing. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it's as a business owner, it's, uh, it's hard, I guess, when you have an Airbnb. It's really hard because you, you run like crazy for six months and then you want to winter off. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's what you've been doing for the last few years. So, if you start saying okay, and work in the winter, that's not really what you wanted in the first place. So it changes really the conception of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. and maybe that's where we have a lot of friction. Yeah, but maybe if they could uh, uh, reduce a lot their income, mm -hmm. but still have you know some income that they didn't have, and they do, do not do the management, or they have other people do it for them. That's fine because I mean maybe you get like eighty uh, percent or eighty five percent during the summer because you mm -hmm. have a management uh, company doing the, the rest, mm -hmm. and then you can have like forty percent of the revenue. Still, it's something that you could use and uh, go by. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, I don't know how it's gonna it's gonna evolve. To, um, it's gonna evolve, but uh, yeah, yeah, things are, are changing and that's uh, that's nice. But it's still uh, still a lot of friction. Yeah. Okay, now now it's the time for for the big question for me. So he, we talked about a lot about the working space, people coming into Naxos, but uh, let's go on the other side. How does one come to Greece or to Naxos? What are the challenges? Um, what could uh, something like what you're doing provide for people to migrate to Naxos? So not for like a month, but maybe for longer. Mm -hmm. Well, challenges. There's there's a lot. I mean, you're you're in a, in a good position to understand that relationship with state is difficult, uh, especially if you don't speak Greek, mm -hmm. if you don't read Greek, it's mm -hmm. it's really it's really difficult. Um, damn, I'm gonna say it again, but COVID helped. <laughs> <laughs> now you can do a lot of stuff online. Yeah, mm. was not the case yeah. uh, a few years ago, right? It changed the whole thing. I mean, on how you operate with uh, the government. Yeah. 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 That's true. That's true. I mean, you don't have to go to Cap for you know signing a paper in front of a guy and puts your stamp like this, you know, on the on your paper, and you know, it you just go online, you scan it, to sign it, and it's done. And um, so it changes everything. Um, but there's still a lot of challenges on that side. Things are very complicated for people who don't know how Greece works on that on that point. Everything else is super easy. It's a cultural gap between. Greece and let's say France or the UK or any other European country is super tiny. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? I mean, okay, we will celebrate more Easter than Christmas, and uh, guess what? Easter is a week after. Okay, <laughs> you can do it. Whatever you say. Okay, I'll do the, I'll do both. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, <fine>. cool. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't think culturally there are many differences. Uh, many of the difference would be in the, um, you know getting tax ready, whatever that means. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, I think that this is a challenge in every country because uh, every country operates a bit differently, but maybe in Greece it's a bit harder. Uh, uh, at least before when you had to you know, to go through the whole thing, I mean, in person. And what, what I would expect to be more difficult in Naxos is that um, it's a, a smaller community and I don't know, I mean, I guess people know English because mm -hmm. of um, some yeah. tourists coming over, but I'm not sure if this is the case for uh, you know the tax office uh, where you would go I don't know uh, yeah. I guess you would have a hard time there yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, it's still, still have yeah <laughs> okay well you at know, least you can do most things online now I mean. yes yeah that, that's really good um, but anytime you have to actually go there 
uh, where you have to be, you know, very patient. And uh, and I don't know if it's my life that's like this, or or if it's just um, the way it is for everybody. But every time I go there, I feel that I end up in, you know, the small lines in a contract, something that's, you know, mm -hmm. the people in front of me have never seen in life, even though it's their job. And they don't want to say, I have no idea what you're talking about. They will say, uh, you're wrong. Okay, I'm missing, I'm missing a, a paper here, you have to yeah. go to get to sign this, and, and then send you somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. And then you call your accountant here in Athens who does this for a living, and she's like, what? <laughs> <You know? Yeah. laughs> Never heard of it, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, that's fun. Um, I, actually, when I was uh, talking with some uh, friends, uh, friends about this, uh, they told me that uh, there is an episode from Master X and Obelix, uh, oh. uh, which is um, um, similar to a Greek tax office. So they go to like uh, uh, to the first uh, office, and then they tell them go to the to the other one, and like uh, four floors yeah. up, two floors down. Yes, and it's mm -hmm. uh, it's really fun. But I have to say that uh, I don't think that this experience is uh, like that because you're not from Greece or you don't speak uh, Greek well enough. It's the same for mm. for Greek people. Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. I, maybe. I feel blessed that I haven't been to the tax office for like uh, three or four years. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know if uh, you can go anymore. I mean, I think only accountants go now. Right? Um, no, you can again. Um, but okay. yeah, you, you're right. It was it was closed at, at least in Naxos. It was closed, it was closed for a certain amount of time, and then you had to take a meeting to go there. Mm -hmm. And um, and if you wanted a meeting, they were like, oh, no, we'll do it by email. <laughs> what was the first part of the pandemic like in Axos? It was very stressful because, well, like everywhere else, we had no idea what tomorrow was going to be. Um, so it was very stressful. Personally, I had some, some back issues at that time and I'm pretty okay. sure this is uh, kind of connected. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so I stayed in bed for like a month. Oh, wow. So that, that, was, that was, you know, bad on bad. Um, but then as soon as I could walk again, um, you know, weather was great and uh, so we could go and uh, send number six, okay. <laughs> right? And go and walk uh, walk the dog uh, as many times as we want and uh, and the dog was like, no, I don't want to go again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, um, but yeah, then we discovered, um, you know, what we sell to people. Okay. Mm -hmm. We discovered the island with good weather and... Um, and then you have a sense of why people are coming. Mm -hmm. I would really expect um, the pandemic to be, um, you know, in a sense, uh, in, in a way, a, a bit easier on an island because, because of that isolation. I mean, you, you know that this thing is not here yet, at mm -hmm. least. I mean, it's going to take. So I would expect it to be a bit more uh, uh, liberated there. I remember because uh, at some point uh, during the pandemic, I think, one day before the lockdown, I was in the village um, where my mother was born, I mean, mm -hmm. cl close there, which is uh, the, the place where I was, was um, 500 people live there, I mean, it's a, a really small place, and it's a, <laughs> it's a bomb, uh, <laughs> bomb is the end. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, so I remember people there really feeling that, you know, this thing is uh, still far away. It's a joke or... Yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't that much that it's a joke, but it was like, uh, you know, um, I don't know, no, not yet, that that was the... Yeah, 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 everybody was feeling that we still have time to see when it, well, it's going to come, if it's going to come. Um, personally, right before the lockdown, we were in Bali. Okay. Oh, okay. So we were understanding that there we were with no Chinese at all. Local people are saying there's no Chinese and they're all they're all sick. <laughs> we're like, okay, yeah, that's not good. And, uh, <laughs> and we, we, when we came back, so we were seeing like every airport in Asia closing down mm -hmm. one after the other, and then so we were going through Singapore and um, we arrived in Singapore and they were already checking in temperature. They were already doing stuff that we've never seen before, only in on NCIS, right? Mm. And we were like, okay, there's something going on here. Uh, let's go back home <laughs> quickly. <laughs> and then we arrived in Greece, and like two days after lockdown. Okay. Oh, yeah, that quick. So, yeah, 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 yeah. We were we were very lucky to be able to come back uh, 
as easily and smoothly as this. Yeah. I think though every phase of the pandemic was like, oh, this is a Chinese thing. Oh, this is a Chinese thing. And maybe in the US they have like a few uh, people getting sick. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's Europe now, but no, you know, Greece doesn't have a lot of travel because well, there was no mm -hmm. summer yet. Oh, you know, we have just a few people in Greece, but uh, they will be it's nothing. Always that way. Yeah. And then, ah, now it's everywhere. So <laughs> there was this belief at every point that uh, this will not spread. But yeah. then, yeah, but, it yeah, did. Well, yeah. <laughs> it did, and it did very, very quickly. And um, if we needed it, it really is like um, a call to understand that we're all connected, mm -hmm. all together. Mm -hmm. And. Um, and there's, there's no difference, right? It's not a Chinese thing or an American thing, I don't know. Mm -hmm. it's, we're all together and um, if one, one side of the planet is not doing well, mm -hmm. the other side where we live on won't be doing well either. Yeah, that's, uh, that's really important and uh, this is something that we oftentimes um, do not remember to take into account because we think that, ah, it's not here or yeah, and um, COVID was not tangible, so maybe people had a bit of um, difficulties to understand really the connection between the countries and everything. Mm -hmm. um, the war in Ukraine is a bit more tangible. Like you really have people coming to mm -hmm. Europe, so that's something that you can see from your own home. Yeah, and I think it will change the way we see. Connect, connection. I, 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 think, I think. I think. First of all, it, it changed at, at least for me because I've talked about this with uh, Anton. Here, the the perception I have about I mean the <laughs> the close neighborhood <laughs> feels a bit less safe now. <laughs> well, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, it, 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 it's shocking because this happened. Like I mean, okay, the coronavirus had the this uh, you know exponential growth. This was like binary, no world war. war. Hmm. I mean, at, at least uh, how I perceived it, because mm -hmm. I'm I'm not uh, watching TV mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. um, the, the antenna does not even work in my house at all. I mean, <laughs> uh, I might uh, see a few, you know, things in Twitter, and um, I wake up one day and I see, okay, there's an attack. Mm -hmm. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, it was a bit more, uh, you know, um, it, it was like a, a punch for me, mm -hmm. at least. Right. Yeah, I understand your point. Yeah. Um, the truth is that um, I think people were able to see it coming. Um, I mean, people like government and mm -hmm. those kind of people. Yeah, I've heard about it, but uh, um, not me. But uh, yeah, yeah. For us, well, we don't, you know, we don't read much international news, maybe because we don't have time and. Uh, and these kind of things, uh, it really, you know, it really flipped the coin, right? Mm -hmm. uh, to be honest, I, I've heard discussions about it or I've heard, you know, that things are not going well, but uh, I don't think that my mind was programmed to understand that this is mm. possible. I mean, it, mm. was, uh, it, it was out of the sphere of possibility, okay, it might be like economic war or, you know, like a small uh, thing or something, but... Uh, seeing troops like uh, in the center of Ukraine and mm -hmm. going through the air or bombing cities, hospitals or whatever they do now, it's things that I would never expect to see uh, in my lifetime. Great, yeah, we're in 2022. I, I would think that it's something that, uh, you know, we could have seen in the past and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we know it is, we know how bad it is, we know how stupid it is, you know, just leave it to the past, keep an eye on it to remember that it exists. So we don't mm. do it again. Yep. Yeah, we don't do it again. We do it again. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was really crazy. I mean, anyway, uh, mm. uh, I don't know enough to, to talk about it, but uh, you know, the, the feeling and uh, the feeling for me being like so many kilometers away was really hard. I imagine how the people feel either having relatives in Ukraine or being in Ukraine. So it's, it's, it's really crazy. Yeah. I don't have much connection with, with this country, but um, so we were working with a guy from Ukraine uh, with a boat, he's, he's now a friend, and he was in Ukraine at the, the time of the first attack. Wow. And um, that was, yeah, that was, that was stressful. We, we haven't talked um, properly since, uh, since then. He's now in Germany, um, so he's safe, that's, that's fine, he's, he's very lucky. Um, but that was very, very stressful for us because we see him as a, as a very good friend, uh, if not family now. 
and um, but yeah, it's it's super stressful. So I can I can only imagine you know what people are really uh, yes. feeling right now. And it's uh, it's not something you want to mm. you want to see. Mm. Yeah. Um, anyway, I'd like to to move a bit. Uh, move on. <laughs> to, to move forward, to move on, and um, uh, I would like to go back to to the start of the conversation. So you talked about uh, the restaurant, the bar, the boat business. Uh, you talked about work from Naxos, which I understand is not something to do full time or uh, it's it's a side project. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what's uh, so on the side is work from Naxos. What's in the center? <laughs> in the center is uh, Captain Book mm-hmm. um, So basically, we build trusted local marketplaces for travel experiences. Okay. So it comes from the fact that. Um, when I was uh, running my sailing tours, um, I was using local people to sell my tours, right? And especially a friend who owns um, a travel agency. And the, communica- the communication between us was very difficult because he would call me to ask, hey, do you have availability for tomorrow? I've got two people. Mm-hmm. And um, I could not answer the phone because while I was sailing with my guests, you know, and if you don't feel very well, like, hold on, I'm going to you know, make money for tomorrow, <laughs> you know, it's, it's not nice. So it was very difficult for us to communicate and mm-hmm. we were losing a lot of sales. Okay. So, so we're like, okay, how the others are doing, how bigger businesses are doing. And we understood that there's no link between um, okay. hospitality, like hotel, Airbnb host, travel agencies and experiences. Mm-hmm. So we were like, okay, cool. That's an opportunity. Let's do something. Um, COVID hit, and uh, where everybody was like, uh, "Okay, it's a lockdown. Let's cool off." We were like, "Okay, it's lockdown. <laughs> we have time. Right. <laughs> we have time." So we start working on uh, on the project. Um, we rewrote what I've been uh, writing for the sailing business mm-hmm. tour uh, tour business uh, before. So all the booking engine capabilities and everything. And uh, we made it able to to work for any type of activity, so okay. that is trekking, sailing, cooking lessons, whatever you can think of. And um, and that's how we that's how we started. So we incorporated this in April uh, this year uh, in Naxos. So it's officially the first uh, tech startup of Naxos. Nice. All right, and in congratulations! The side Thank you very much. <laughs> So yeah, that's funny when I say that, but uh, it's true. <laughs> um, so th- this is more like a B two B, like a you. It's definitely B two B, yeah. So it's not right. like I can go there and find your uh, sales tools or something. It's no. but no, you, no, you no, connect the no. different businesses that provide different services. I mean, like hospitality and you know. It's trading. only uh, experiences, any type of ah, experience, okay. mm-hmm. with resellers. So with hotel, Airbnb host, and uh, travel agencies. Okay. We've got API connection as well, so that could be for uh, we're in talks with uh, people doing um, taxi transfers, mm-hmm. this kind of thing, so so they can sell our products. Okay. So um, who wrote this? I mean, are you a programmer? Who are you the programmer who wrote it? Are you? Okay, number nineteen. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So uh, I started uh, started the whole thing, and then we hired uh, two more people. Were working with us on on the tech side to to tech. We're working with us at the moment, uh, and it's it's great. Um, well, it's beginning. It's mm-hmm. still a, still. A do they live uh, in Axos or do they live? Uh... I wanted it so badly. Um, well, again, it's difficult to hire. We never found um, never found somebody who's uh, qualifying for that uh, role uh, in Axos. Mm-hmm. And um, so I wanted to hire somebody from Greece who at least has some ties with Greece, and um, we didn't find anybody. Really? Yeah, we had one one um, resume uh, from a, a Greek person living in South Africa. Mm-hmm. Never came mm-hmm. to the call. Like we booked wow. the call, didn't came to didn't That's come bad. to the call. Yeah, it was bad. But he sent an email and said, "I'm sorry, something happened at work and I cannot do it at that time." Um, and you know what? I think about it. I don't want to do it. Mm-hmm. So I'm mm-hmm. okay. I'm good. And the guy said, um, "But I have somebody in mind for you. It would be perfect." So I go, yeah, okay. Maybe he says, says that. So I don't, you know, so I don't get angry. <laughs> and um, he sends another email a few days later with a Twitter account, and he's like, "That's the guy you need." Okay. Okay. Let's talk to the guy I need. <laughs> 
Uh, we'll hide him. Wow. <laughs> wow. So I sent a message to the guy and I was like, uh, there's this green guy uh, saying that I should speak to you. And the guy's like, oh, I don't know that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. That's a great story. <laughs> but you hired that person. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's his first week um, <laughs> and uh, it's, it's great. It's doing great. I'm super happy. It's amazing. It's, uh, it's a good human and it's a uh, thank you. It's a good human and it's a good uh, tech person. So, awesome. check, check. Mm -hmm. so um, do currently people, I uh, can currently people providing experiences, login and create the profile or what state is it? Naxos, Greece, globally? So, um, so you understand building marketplaces is uh, it's difficult. You have to start from somewhere. Um, so we started uh, with a small geography, kind of, which is a cyclate in general. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've got already 150 products. Awesome. So that's that's moving. It's moving okay. Uh, we've got a few leads as well from other part of Greece, uh, from Italy, from Croatia, from New Zealand. You know, we've got a few a few leads uh, that you know organically came to us, mm -hmm. so that's perfectly fine as well. But the focus is uh, is cyclate. So yeah, so that that's the goal for now. Um, booking engine is working. Everything is uh, is ready. We've got uh, a nice channel manager. Um, mm -hmm. Connecting those activities to online travel agencies like H Guide, Viator, these kind of businesses because it's still it's still important, right? It still puts your products in front of people, even though as a as a tour business owner it costs you a big commission. Mm -hmm. like just to give you an idea, uh, Viator takes up to thirty percent. Okay, that's a lot. So it's like having somebody working with you. Mm -hmm. Doesn't do much, you know. It's just a website. <laughs> Okay, uh, so, I thought it was more like in the 15%, which is like the well, those common... Days are over. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's 20, 25 for the cheapest and uh, it goes up to 30 for, for the Yeto, depending on where it is on the, in the world, yeah. But it's, uh, yeah, it's expensive and they have this new program where it's basically um, a play a pay-to-play program, it's called Vieto Accelerate mm -hmm. and you have to pay to go on top of the listings when somebody okay. is looking for something. So that raises a lot of problems because no small operators, uh, well, they will go down because that's very expensive for them. So um, if you want to actually work well with those guys, you have to give 30%, you have to pay to be uh, listed on top of the, the results and it gets very expensive. So that's something that we, we address and we fix by connecting those people to resellers like Altairs, Airbnb, because that's where that's where the most um, bookings are coming from. Mm -hmm. Like sixty four percent of bookings are done while the final customer is in destination. Okay. Sixty four, more than the majority. Mm -hmm. So that's people going either on internet or that's people going to down to the hotel to the lobby and saying to the guy at the reception, Hey, I'm here for tomorrow. Don't know what to do. What can I do for tomorrow? Uh, or I want to see this, this, or that. Do you have someone to recommend mm -hmm. to? I want to do sailing. Do you have something for me? Okay. Um, so on the un on the one hand, I'm it's me. I go there. I create my experiences, and then I have my calendar and availability and everything. Mm -hmm. And then Paris, who's got a Airbnb or something, goes there and registers and says, okay, what are the experiences available for Naxos or something like that? Yeah, it's, it's a bit more evolved than that because when uh, Paris, the Airbnb owner, will register, uh, it will say that he's in Naxos and then uh, the system will see that you're in Naxos and will give you a list of uh, activities that you are, uh, most probably you will sell a lot. Okay. Okay. So that's an algorithm that we will make better with time, of course, because we need mm -hmm. data for that. Uh, it's the first season for us, so we don't have those data yet. Um, but yeah, so you, you end up, you don't have that time, you know, to go and search for activities and you don't really know what you want to sell, but, you know, we make you a list of what we see would be a good match for your business. And with this list, you can eventually tweak it if you want, you can remove activities, you can put more activities if you want, but that's a good start already. Mm -hmm. So what you can do afterwards, you can print a QR code and put it in your Airbnb place. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go just flash. Oh, I can do that, that, that. Okay. okay. And so that's like that's a main channel for activities. Yeah. So that's one channel for you. Um, the other channel is if you have a reception desk or something like this, people can you know speak to the guy there and he has um, 
a dashboard of a view where you can directly book mm. for customers. Nice. And uh, and I understand the pricing is I pay like 10 euro, you take a cut, the reseller takes a cut and the rest goes to the... Yeah, the so, so basically the marketplace works like this. Um, because you don't know each other, mm -hmm. base the base um, commission is 10%. Okay. Okay, and we as platform, we take 4%. Okay. Um, but if you know each other and uh, and you, you've already been working together before, in the past, before that marketplace or ever exists, um, maybe you have other commission in place. You can negotiate the commission mm -hmm. so it can increase and you can, you can put uh, the amount that you want. Um, and you can do a lot of stuff. You can, you can say you as a provider, you can say um, I will pay myself the 4% of Captain Book or you can say I don't want to pay for it, let the final customer pay for it. Okay. So if you let the final customer pay for it, that basically means that using, it says that using our services for you as a provider is completely free. Okay. Okay. So that's cool. Doesn't cost anything. Brings you customers. Nice. Nice. So you do all the mechanics and you also do the payments uh, for the end user. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everything is uh, is on the platform. It's uh, it really is a, a one stop uh, shop for nice. the, the B two B side of things. And uh, and yeah, it's uh, it's really nice. It's uh, it's really straightforward. And and uh, there's a lot of um, communication tools to help. This go in mm. like emails, transactional emails, this kind of things, uh, and it, it makes it very easy to use, and uh, it really fixed the problem. And what, what I like the most in this project is that instead of giving thirty percent of your business to Viator and it goes to another country, and um, you know you get only what remains, um, this amount of money that goes abroad stays in this nation because mm. now you have ten percent. And you have the the rest, but everybody is in the same. Country. But it's in destination, so that means that you know it helps the destination grow. This mm. money stays there, so it's it starts circulating, Certainly. and that's very important to develop destinations. But still, if if I'd like to, I can just press a button and make my service available to Viator or other service like that. No problem, no problem. We understand that um, some people rely only on this, mm -hmm. so that's something we wanted to, to do. And we understand as well that uh, big businesses, big tool uh, providers, they need this connection because, well, that's what they've been doing mm -hmm. for the last years. And um, they will not feel comfortable coming with us if we don't, if we don't have this possibility, right? Okay. Because it's like 80% of your revenue, something like this. Mm -hmm. You won't say, you know what, 80%, that's fine, I can take the risk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it's different. <laughs> Never happened. <Okay. laughs> and that's uh, something we we did not understand in the first place. We we thought I thought, and that's my mistake. I thought in the, in the beginning that we could uh, stay away from channel management, and uh, and we'll be all right. Um, so we had to review a bit the the roadmap and uh, and be smart to develop this quickly, um, mm -hmm. so we could uh, you know build on on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you, at the end of the day, if you believe that most of the bookings will be made through resellers, that's fine. You you will still not have a lot of uh, bookings going to the other or whatever the other month. Yeah, I know it's going to be the way, but I cannot ask my customer to trust me that much to okay. to say eighty percent of my business. Yeah, that's fine. I trust you, man. <laughs> also, especially if you're working with local businesses which are not used to such uh, you know um, marketplaces and. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're suspicious by nature. I mean, this is something novel, something new. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, what the fuck? I mean, la like, uh, the same way that people were afraid to put their credit cards on the internet at some point. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. Cool stuff. Uh, it's very exciting, yeah. It's, it's very, very nice. Uh, so I'm super happy we've got those two people working on the tech side. Uh, we've got a great, uh, a great woman from uh, Corfu working on the, on the marketing oh, okay. side of things. And uh, Luca, my co-founder, is working on operations, and uh, and you know it's it's crazy. Like an example comes to my mind uh, from yesterday, where uh, we had a customer, somebody that I know, um, who runs um, a boat business in Italy, and she registered, and she sent me a message uh, like, okay, I registered, and uh, I'll finish building the product later because mm. I don't have time right now. Okay. And um, so I didn't have the time to to say so to uh, to Luca to operations. So the whole mechanics of the 
we need to speak to this person who just registered, you know, got into motion, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, she sent me another message uh, at night and she said, I'm super impressed by the velocity, right? Like, <coughs> like I just registered and I've got your co-founder send me a message uh, asking if I want any help. Uh, and I saw you uh, on social media and stuff and, you know, everything is is going, you know, to make her feel that, you know, mm. she can trust us. And that, that was, that was incredible. Like it's, it's something like I started to build and it, it's moving and now it's, mm. you know, have my control. Awesome. Right? Yeah, it's amazing. It's, it's nice. I mean, it's a, it's a bit uh, scary at first, but then it's a really mm. nice thing that things, mm. you know, can continue working and moving forward. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, I'd like to ask uh, one last question. Um, do you think that uh, people should try to decentralize more uh, from capital cities and stuff like that? Or do you think that um, decentralizing is something that, you know, just a few can bear with? In a physical sense? You mean? In a physical sense. I mean, living less in Athens, Paris, London, and moving more to Naxos or, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, other France, uh, smaller cities. I think, I also, I think um, Greece has, uh, in my point of view, one of the biggest centralization problems. I mean, it's Athens, it's Thessaloniki, <laughs> and actually, that's it. But it's more than 50% in Attica. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. it's, uh, um, so, what's your take on this? Well, to answer that question, we have to, to think about why people would go into a city mm -hmm. altogether while we have so much space. So what the city has to give to people that another space, another place don't have? I'd say opportunity exactly. sometimes. I mean, I mean <laughs> I, I, I'm asking you, I mean, if, if you ask me, I, I can tell a few things. Mm -hmm. Because I, I grew up in a suburb. Okay. Um, I did not grow up in downtown and I was uh, quite often, I was going to the village. So if, if you ask me, um, I think it's easier to go to watch a movie, um, go to a place that people don't know me. Mm -hmm. That's quite important. I mean, it's the fact that in uh, small towns, everyone knows everyone. Mm -hmm. That's creepy. Okay. It creeps mm -hmm. me out. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, there's one last thing. Although I do an enjoy isolation and I already plan going for a few days at you know our house we have at the beach um, I feel a bit unsafe in case I need a hospital I mean um, and maybe Naxos is not uh, I, I, I think it might be a very good place to decentralize mm -hmm. because it has a hospital, yeah. it has a few options. I know it's one of the few islands that is, I mean, if you, you know, keep it as is, I mean, it's uh, autonomous. Mm -hmm. It has almost everything. I mean, yeah. you can even drink the water from the tap in particular places. Um, not, not, not in the whole island, definitely. but I know that uh, because it has mountains, mm -hmm. yeah. in a few villages, yeah, I think uh, you can drink from Yeah, the in villages, that's true, yeah. yeah. I wouldn't try that in Hora, but... Um, yeah, in appearance, I think uh, a few people do so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah but, uh, and I don't know, I mean, some places don't have universities. Mm -hmm. What happens if I want to go to Athens? So you, ha you have an airport, so... But yeah, th that's my, my thoughts as uh, a kid that grew up close to Athens. Right, okay. In Athens. Okay, so you see that it depends uh, on at what point in your life you are. Mm -hmm. Like if you need to go to a university, maybe Naxos is not the best place to be at the moment. Mm. If you after that, and that you can find all services that you need in a remote place, whether that is Naxos or any other <coughs> island, um, I'm quite convinced that you will find uh, a lot of positive um, options to, to go actually there. Like the fact that um, after work you can go and have a walk on the beach like mm -hmm. 10 minutes after, even in summer. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really good and uh, COVID helped actually on that uh, on that matter because <laughs> yeah. I, I spent I think three or four weeks uh, in Mykonos in the first mm -hmm. uh, summer from COVID and it was majestic because I mean Due to COVID, Mykonos was nice during summer because yeah. usually Mykonos was nice during summer. <laughs> <laughs> um, and at the same time, the, the, the ability to just, uh, you know, start the computer and go for, not for long, for like 20 minutes, half an hour to the beach, have a walk, maybe uh, have a swim, it was, it was really nice. And 
I understand what you're saying. Uh, personally, I I like a lot the craziness of the city. So mm -hmm. that's but that's personal. It's not um, a thing. But another thing, I would say that I would always need an airport nearby. Mm -hmm. So Naxos would be one of the options because. Um, we might be able to, to work remotely, but uh, now that things are getting back to what we think will be some kind of normal, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> uh, maybe. Um, uh, travel is one of the things that uh, for our work we might need it. So airport would be yeah. one of the uh, noble things for other islands or other places. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I definitely follow you with the fact that uh, there are some downsides and uh, being far away from everything. Um, transportation cost is one of them. Mm -hmm. um, living cost is another one because, um, like, uh, petrol is very expensive on the island. Um, on the other hand, food might be a bit cheaper. Maybe not everything, but whatever is local, locally mm -hmm. produced is going to be cheaper. Um, but you don't have a large choice as mm -hmm. you could as you could have here. So, so maybe you don't see it. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but yeah, for, for my personal opinion, the the um, positivity overtake the those downsides. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. fact that you can go to the beach just to have a walk, and if you if you fell up with the beach because you have seen the sea too much, you can go to the mountain, and you know it's another story, and it, you know it's completely different. You can spend days without seeing the sea on an island. Right. If you go up to the villages and you can, you know, walk into into the narrow streets, it's it's completely different. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I'm not saying it's it's for everybody, but um, I'm saying that if you think about it and if you think that you should try, then do it. <laughs> yeah, uh, and uh, yeah, I mean. Uh buy a restaurant from the beach or then run a boat business this again i'm not saying you should try <laughs> <laughs> it's i mean it's i can't say it's a mistake because it it took me to greece i met my wife i met my my friends and you know so it's not a mistake but um it's a lot of stress it's a lot of work it's a lot of money it's um yeah it's something that uh, maybe you should not do and you should Think about it before, yeah, or find somebody who mm. can, you know, resonate a bit with you and say, hmm, looks a bit weird, the project, right? <laughs> <laughs> nice stuff. Um, so, uh, any other things so, that you do currently or uh, for the future? What I do, uh, well, I think Captain Book is already enough, um, <laughs> like 15 hours a day. Okay. So, it's already not bad. Um, the rest is spent uh, with my family, that is my wife and my dog. Um, and uh, whatever is left uh, is on uh, Walk from Nexus. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Mm -hmm. So if people want to work from a Greek island, they should go to the website, find yeah. uh, more information there. Mm -hmm. uh, Walkfromnexus.gr and um, join the Slack channels and uh, we help um, as much as we can there. And uh, we're quite reactive usually, so yeah, people are speaking and, uh, you know, help awesome. each other. So it creates, you know, a sense of community. Yeah. I think also for people uh, migrating to Greece, there's also like tax reductions and that kind of stuff, so that might yes. be also... In, uh, yeah, that's in true, yeah, there's, mm -hmm. uh, there's a few incentives uh, that mm -hmm. are really nice, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Awesome. Not financial advice. No, 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 no. <laughs> by any means, we don't, we don't want to cross that line. <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, coming to the to the end of uh, today's uh, conversation um, we we have a few minutes if you'd like to propose something a suggestion can be a book can be podcasts uh, a product a thing some idea whatever you want it can be either one or many and uh, you can go either first or last so it's up to you well you have something to to propose uh, i always think about it in the last minute so i'm now thinking on the background what this will be. Okay. Uh, I think I have one. It's a conference. Conference? Yeah. Conference? Yeah. These things will happen again. <laughs> a, a conference. Yeah. Uh, Vox Days is Huh. Yeah. It's going to happen, I think, in June. Yeah. And uh, I highly propose people to get together again after two years. and enjoy a very nice conference in Thessaloniki, a nice excuse to go with some nice food, see people, enjoy some nice presentations, so that's it for me. What is it about? 
Uh, it's a tech conference. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, um, I mean, it's, yeah, usually about DevOps. I mean, and okay, okay, right, right, okay, okay, really nice. nice. Right, Patty. Um, yeah, I would propose there's another podcast that I started um, taking a look at. It's called Lifespan. It's from um, from. Um, a scientist called David Sinclair, who is a Harvard prof professor working on longevity and how to reverse aging and all that stuff. And he has all sorts of interesting stuff about how we eat and when we eat and how we operate. I mean, um, nice. make us look younger or older and all that stuff. It's, mm. it's super interesting. Ah, interesting. Yeah? interesting. Um, well, I've got I've got two things in mind. Um, awesome. The first one is a, is a podcast called Pitch Me Up. Um, Mm -hmm. from uh, Lagis and uh, Gikariev, mm -hmm. which is um, basically it's uh, startups coming to, to pitch their ID and, uh, and there's, a, there's a few business angels behind the, the podcast and mm -hmm. they tell you if they invest or not. It, it's basically kind of um, Dragon's Den on BBC, but on, in a podcast form. So that's really interesting and it gives you, you know, a nice idea of what's being built at the moment. So that's, uh, that's funny. Um, the other one that I have in mind is a program that starts very soon, um, which is called EU Startup Universe. Yeah. Um, so it's a startup again. Um, it's organized by uh, Greeks. Mm -hmm. Nice. This is an, in an initiative uh, from Greece. It started last year as the Greek Startup Universe. Okay. And um, it's something that uh, I want to keep my eyes on because something very good can come from that. And um, I have a third. It's not a podcast or anything. It's just something that's happening. Um, do you know French Tech? French Tech. Mm -hmm. wow. French Tech, the the big um, community in France, um, organizing um, startup life, and there's uh, communities everywhere in the world. Okay. Right. Um, well, there's a community in uh, in Athens that's uh, that's starting. Uh, that will awesome. be officialized in September. Um, Gikriev is the is the president of it. Uh, I'm part of the board. Uh, we're we're like ten people roughly. Mm -hmm. um, awesome. Community is open. Um, so everybody who's uh, who has um, any ties with Greece or France or both would be best. Um, you can join, so yeah, nice. you can get in touch. It's really nice, and um, it's very interesting to see what's being built. It's uh, it's with the help of the French embassy, and okay. uh, you know it's very nice people, and uh, yeah, it's very interesting. Nice, so nice. If you have anything to bring on. <laughs> amazing. Yeah, we'll uh, definitely check uh, those things out. I think I've seen uh, pits me up uh, mm -hmm. somewhere. I don't remember where I came across it, but uh, it's fun. Mm -hmm. The others I didn't know, but I'll make sure to learn about them. Uh, so, Zeron, thanks a lot. Uh, today's conversation was uh, really amazing, at least for me. I enjoyed yeah. it a lot. Thank you very much for, for your time, guys. Thank you for, for the invitation. That was a pleasure. Awesome. Thank yeah, you. so that was uh, the first uh, episode of uh, Greek Veda in English. So, uh, hopefully, we'll have more guests uh, like you and, uh, and do it uh, over and over again. We'll speak about it again in a few hours in open coffee, but the others will not have it uh, publicly. Uh, so that's it for us. Uh, for everyone that does not uh, know the podcast, you can find us at greekweather.fm or the link in the description. It's a podcast in Greek, so sorry if you're not Greek. But uh, a few episodes are going to be in English. So, uh, yeah. We're going to try to have uh, some content in English too. So that's it for us, and uh, thanks a yeah. lot. All right. Thank you.